Hi, how are you? My name's Luca, and uh, I don't live on the second floor. No, this is in Vega. Vega. <laughs> My name is Luca. I live on the second floor. You know? Hey you and welcome. My name is Mike and in this video we're going back to, you guessed it, Canada. This is the story of certified crazy person Luca Magnata, who was, um, well, just an all-around piece of shite. So to give you guys a little taste, he would kill kittens, he murdered and cut up an international student, he posted the video of this online, and then he went on the run and his favourite hobby was taking pictures of himself. This is the story of Luca Magnata, and probably one of the most disturbing ones I've covered, so... Let's get into it, I suppose. Luca Magnata was born Eric Clinton Kirk Newman in 1982 in Scarborough, Ontario. He was one of three children and he was homeschooled for much of his childhood, with no contact with children his own age. According to him, his mother was obsessed with cleanliness and would routinely lock her children out of the house, and once put her children's pet rabbits out in the cold to freeze to death. Even when he was six or seven, his mother forced him to keep wearing diapers. His father was diagnosed with schizophrenia in 1994, after which he divorced his wife, leading to Luca later moving in with his grandmother. Both his grandmother and younger brother abused him for his effeminate tendencies. He was actually bullied quite a lot growing up. He never graduated high school and began showing signs of mental illness, like his father. After high school, he started doing gay porn, became a gay escort and a stripper at one point. Becoming an escort, do you enjoy your work? Yeah, you know, I really do enjoy my work. Um, I get to meet new people and, uh, <laughs> all the time and, uh, you know, I'm, I'm a people person and, uh, you know, it just worked out great for me, you know. In 2004, Luca first caught the attention of the Toronto police after he befriended a 21-year-old woman with the mental capacity of a child and convinced her to apply for credit cards. He then racked up $10,000 in unpaid bills. The police quickly caught on to this and he was charged with fraud. However, initially, police alleged he sexually assaulted the woman and videotaped it, but the police dropped the charge before the case went to trial. In 2005, Luca pled guilty and was convicted of four fraud charges. Before sentencing, his lawyer showed the court a medical report revealing that he had significant psychiatric issues. When the judge handed down the sentence, he said, you have a medical problem, and you need to always take medication. If you do not, your life is going to get messed up. Luca was then given a 9-month community service sentence and 12 months of probation. Luca Magnata's lawyer at the time later said that the decision changed the course of Luca's life immeasurably, with huge ramifications to our society eventually. Well, that's not good. In early 2006, Luca began dating Barbie, a transgendered woman. I met Luca Magnata January of 2006. It's funny because the first thing I said was, I hope you're not going to murder me or kill me as a joke. The most weirdest uh, relationships that I've had, to be honest. Uh, but don't get me wrong, he was a nice guy. He was very sweet and very romantic. Like, he took me out to Captain John's on our first date. Well, he picked me up with a limo, right? Several months later, they broke up, and it was around this time that he legally changed his name to Luca Rocco Magnota, the porniest male porn star name there is. He later filed for bankruptcy, and it seems that uh, around this time, he decided that normal life eh, just wasn't for him, and he needed to be somebody, and yikes. It was shortly after this that he began to get cosmetic surgery. Two hair transplants, like I said before, and I'm planning on doing muscle implants in my pecs and my arms. So that just remains to be seen, but because that's pretty. You think you're a bit constant. of an addict? 
<laughs> yeah, my name's Luca and I'm a cosmetic surgery addict. And he also tried out multiple times for different reality TV shows, but never got past the auditions. He was pretty much the definition of celebrity wannabe. How important are your looks to you? Oh my god, if, that's number one. Okay, number one is looks, number two would have to be intelligence, and I don't know what the rest are. <laughs> all I do, all I care about is number one, basically. Hi, my name is Luca. Magnot is my last name, M-A-G-N-O-T-T-A. -T -T Hi, Luca, how are you today? Good, how are you? Cover here. So, Thank right you. away, you know this is an underwear competition. I'm going to ask you to disrobe to cut the shirt right away. All right, definitely. John, how come like this voice is lower? Yours went lower. <laughs> I have a very deep voice. A lot of people tell me that, actually. Yeah, I'm good speaking voice. So how do you get your voice so deep? How do I get my voice so deep? Practice makes perfect, right? A lot of people tell me I'm really devastatingly good looking, so. Yeah, but I think the problem is that what is good for cover and I isn't always what you're attracted to in your personal life. And I know that he's very your type. Well, everyone has their personal point of view, like who, who they like and who they don't like, basically. I just don't think he's deep enough for cover guy. I don't think you have the musculature yet. I, I can definitely say, can gain weight. Yeah, yeah I know you say you can gain weight. But you, got, you, you won't think I can. How much weight can you gain in two weeks? I can gain muscle. Everybody can do it. You know, I can gain muscle. I can work out. I'm very determined. And every goal that I put my uh, mind to, I surpass. And this is when things start to get really crazy. Luca dropped by the Toronto Suns headquarters in September 2007 to deny online rumors that he was dating Carla Homolka, a woman who, along with her husband, murdered three teenage girls. She was arrested in 1993 and released in 2005. My modeling career is uh, kind of uh, going downhill, basically, um, these days, to be honest with you. And, um, and it's all because of this whole rumor of you dating Carl Hamoka. That's this is the thing that's the rumors destroyed my life basically, and um, I've been receiving death threats. My address is posted. That's why I had to move. Uh, I want my Pomeranian back. It was taken out of my SUV. I, I, I'm about to have a nervous breakdown here. My reputation is completely ruined. Um, I just uh, want everybody to set, I want to set the record straight that um, me and her have absolutely no connection. I go in to see casting directors, I go in to see agents, you know, they know who I am, you know, it's all over everywhere. Now, the rumours that Luca and Carla were dating were completely unfounded and very likely started by Luca himself. This is when we get into more of him just being a insane person who just wanted as much attention as possible at all times. He then continued to try garner attention online, posting comments about himself to create rumours and then using other profiles to deny them. Here he created one of his own YouTube fan pages. Twice in 2008 he lost battles with Wikipedia to keep a page up about himself. He was just gagging for a Wikipedia page. Um, I mean well he has one now, but um, it's what he did to get it that we're gonna get into. His online ramblings then got progressively darker. Then, in 2010, shortly before Christmas, a video called One Guy, Two Kittens started circulating on discussion boards. The video depicted an unidentified man whose face was concealed, placing two kittens in a sealed bag, and, well, let's not get into it. Uh, yeah. Though the video was quickly removed from YouTube, animal activists learnt of it and the hunt for Luca began. Honestly, the animal activists did a much better job of uh, finding him than like any police investigation did ever for finding anyone. Pretty impressive actually, if you read into it. Shortly after the video was circulated, Ryan Boyle, a former US soldier, became the admin of a Facebook group called Find the Vacuum Kitten Killer for Great Justice. I mean, the name sounds like something that was directly translated from like Japanese or something, but um, they had good intentions, so. About 4,000 people signed up. Luca also joined the group under an alias. A $5,000 reward was posted for information leading to the arrest of the vacuum kitten killer. However, he had posed with the cats before, and several unique personal items in the video could identify him before, well, um, the final video 
which we're going to get to. Something to look forward to. So honestly, the group kind of found out who he was quick enough. Still, this was not enough to get the police heavily involved. Online activist groups were outraged as they tried to get the police to take these actions seriously. They spent thousands of hours trying to track him down. They compiled pages of evidence which they delivered to law enforcement. Detailed photographic analysis, metadata pulled from numerous photographs, detailed locations of the suspected kin killer's whereabouts. Pretty much everything. But nothing really happened. About a year later, he posted more videos of cats and, um, death, which the activists thought he was, like, taunting them with. And then we get into even more death, but uh, of the uh, bigger kind. Over the course of two days, May 15th and May 16th, 2012, repeated references were made online to a new video. One lunatic, one ice pick. The video hadn't even been posted. After a flurry of online postings, Luca's online activity then went black for a few days. And then Concordia University student John Lin failed to show up for his job. This footage shows him with Luca Magnata entering Luca's apartment. John Lin was from Wuhan and began dating Luca in 2012. He then vanished. On May 25th, a video surfaced called One Lunatic, One Ice Pick. In the video, John is seen tied to a bed frame while... I think the title gives you all the information you really need to know. But he did horrible shit to the body, like some real sick shit that I'm not gonna get into because it's... Just no. Now, initially, the police didn't even believe the video was real. On multiple occasions, Interpol, the FBI, and the Toronto Police were informed of the video's existence. For days, they ignored the video, assuming it was a fake. Even when a lawyer was the one trying to bring attention to the video. That was until a janitor found John's dismembered torso inside a suitcase outside a Montreal apartment building. Four days after the video was posted, on May 29th, 2012, a package containing a left foot was delivered to the national headquarters of the Conservative Party of Canada. The package was stained with blood and had a foul smell and was marked with a red heart symbol. Another package containing a left hand was intercepted in a Canada Post processing facility, addressed to the Liberal Party. After finding identifying information among the suitcase and packages. Police quickly went to Luca's apartment. They also get this surveillance footage showing Luca dumping quite a lot of stuff. Luca's apartment had been mostly emptied before he left. Blood was found on different items, including the mattress, the refrigerator, the table, and the bathtub. If you don't like the reflection, don't look in the mirror. I don't care. It was written in red ink on the inside of a closet. So, where was Luca? Long gone! He was running away to Europe, not only to hide, but to have a grand old time. Canada tried to let transportation services know that Luca was wanted but by the time they were informed, he had already boarded a plane to Paris. And by the time the police reached his hotel room, he was gone. From there, he stayed with random men and took videos of himself, as he loved to do. He went to parties and lived as if he wasn't on the run by just having a jolly good time. What's up and hi to all my fans. He was eventually caught in Berlin when, no surprise, he was found in an internet cafe reading online news stories about himself, and probably getting annoyed about the pictures they used of him.
On June 5th, 2012, a package containing a right foot was delivered to St. George's School, and another package containing a right hand to False Creek Elementary School in Vancouver. You can guess who they were from. I can't link it to anything right now. Um, as we progress in the investigation, we will provide as much information as we can. Luca was then extradited back to Canada on June 18th. Luca Magnata's final words as a free man to police, Okay, you got me. I thought, that's him who was wanted, this man says. I saw a police car in the street and stopped it. Magnata's arrest follows an international manhunt for the man accused of murdering and dismembering a Chinese exchange student in Montreal, then mailing his body parts. Luca was obsessed with keeping up appearances, seeming to thrive on media attention. Because of this and the gruesome behavior, the judge decided that the media would not be allowed in the courtroom. The judge wanted to be certain that Luca would not gain additional notoriety from his video or his actions. In addition, he was kept in solitary confinement. He initially pled not guilty to all charges. However, on April 12th, 2013, Luca was indicted on charges of first degree murder, offering indignities to a human body, distributing obscene materials, using the postal service to distribute obscene materials, and criminal harassment. During the trial, it became increasingly clear that Luca Vignata was not well. He fainted several times during the trial and claimed not to remember much of what was said. A disturbing and emotional day in a Montreal courtroom was cut short after accused killer Luca Magnata collapsed. As part of the proceedings, six psychologists were brought in to check on his mental capacity and sanity. And they all said pretty much the same thing. Most of them said he had borderline personality disorder and or paranoid schizophrenia. They also pointed back to a court case in 2005, when he was asked by a judge to take medication for paranoid schizophrenia. The one where the judge said, if you don't always take your medication, your life's going to be messed up. Immeasurably. With huge ramifications to our society eventually. I mean, that's a bit of an understatement considering what happened, but he was on the ball. The defense argued that this personality disorder meant that he was not responsible for what he had done. However, the jury found that despite his mental illness, he had known what he was doing. He demonstrated premeditation and was sentenced to life in prison, where he remains in maximum security to today. There was never any doubt Luca Magnata killed Jun Lin, but today a jury found beyond a reasonable doubt he murdered him. Paul, the accused, showed no emotion as he stood to hear his fate. After more than seven days of deliberations, the jury had just one word for each of the five counts against Luca Magnotta. Guilty. That was the word Lynn Duran was waiting for as he sat through week after week of graphic testimony. Luca Magnotta, the man who killed his 33-year-old son, June Lin, is going to jail for life. The family's lawyer says the verdict brings some relief. This does not return his son. It gives him no pleasure to see this man punished or sent away. It's better than nothing. The pain remains for the family, left with so many unanswered questions. In a victim impact statement read out in court, Lynn's father wrote, in one night, we lost a lifetime of hope, our futures, parts of our past. Now, Lucas still has quite the fan club. Shocking. People sent him love letters in prison. His videos still circulate online, and a few fans have even tried to emulate his look. There are fan pages for Luca on Facebook and entire websites devoted to him. His cult following says they support him against persecution. One fan online wrote, Maybe it's my mind's way of coping with the inexplicable dichotomy of beauty and the beast. The extreme beauty of the person versus the extreme ugliness of the alleged act. I don't know. All I do know is that I feel powerless to control these thoughts, and that there is an amazing, physical, warm sensation when I think of him. Something akin to love. How sweet. You can find stuff on Reddit, Pinterest, people... Uh, I don't know. But there you have it. I've been making these videos for quite a while, and you know, you kind of start to think that nothing can surprise you, and then you come across a nut job like Luca Magnotta, and you're like, wow. Oh, actually, uh, one more thing. If you were looking for a hot date in the past, well, you could get one with him, as his profile appeared on Canadian Inmates Connect, where he was looking for his Prince Charming. It also says his expected release is in 2037, when he will be 55. 
So start counting down the hours, guys. Not that far away. Only like 18 years. Thank you so, so much for watching. I really, really appreciate it. If you'd like to see some more of my videos, please uh, subscribe if you want to. And yeah, I guess that's it. I will see you as always real soon in the next video. Thanks again. Mike out.